guys, um, I decided to do Lucy Knox tonight. She is the husband of former Secretary of War Henry Knox. She was born in 1756 to the Royal Secretary of the Providence of Massachusetts, Thomas Flucker. He was a loyalist. Her husband, Henry, what, dropped out of school at an early age to help his mother, mother, who happened to be a widow. He worked as an apprentice as a bookbinder for a local bookkeeper. Eventually, Henry would open his own bookstore. At the age of 17, Lucy found his bookstore, and it became very evident very quickly that she had no interest whatsoever in the books. Being a very strong-willed child, at 17, she decided she was going to marry Henry. I don't think he had asked her yet, but she decided she was going to marry Henry. Her parents totally forbade it. They said, look, sister, you are going to be poor. You're going to be politically ruined. This is not the life we envisioned for you. We, we don't condone this. We cannot bless this marriage. Of course, going against her will, or against their will, prior to her, a few days before her 18th birthday, she would marry Henry. They came from very, very, very different backgrounds. His being very poverty, hers being very wealthy. But they made it work, and they had a very happy and loving marriage. She would give him 13 children. The only issue was that 10 of those 13 children would not make it to adulthood. When George General Gage banned the Boston citizens from leaving Boston to go join the Patriot Army, it is said that Henry and Lucy rode together late in the night in the spring of 1775 and escaped to Boston so he could join the Patriot Army. It's also said that her his sword was sewn to the inside of her cape as a way to protect it. As the years would go on, she was not far from him. She served, you know, he she was there nearby. The letters, you know, they prove invaluable that she was very loving and she thought about him all the time. Um, while they were at Valley Forge that winter, she was given a home, or he was given a home, which she was allowed to go and live in. She regularly allowed the soldiers, the enlisted men, and the lower officers to come into her home to stay warm, to be fed, to be happy. There are stories that she would have drinking and parties and singing merrily, probably, you know, their style of karaoke, late into the night. Um, she also became very good friends with Martha Washington, who y'all would know as the f the former first lady, but she would become the first lady at this point. She, her, even though Martha was 25 years her senior, she would become very close friends with her. She would sew, both of them sewed, mended, and even attended the sick while they were at Valley Forge. Once the spring hit and Valley Forge was going to be fought, her and Martha left for Mount Vernon. She would have become the caretaker or companion for Martha at Mount Vernon. She was the, Lucy was the epitome of a military spouse. She served the home front. She kept the home fires burning. She might not have done something as, awesome or as amazing as Betsy Ross in sewing the first American flag, but a military spouse is just as important. These are the women that they keep their love going. They send this love to their husbands or their significant others on the battlefields and keep their morale up. She, you know, she loved a military man, a man that served his country so notably but she kept his household running. She kept his kids going. She did everything as she could. Um, running a military a military man's household in his absence is a feat of its own. It is something that is to be said. It's it's a very heroic thing. She, her, and Henry would eventually retire to their countryside home in, in uh, excuse me their Mont their countryside home Montepillar. He would die at the age of 56. She would survive him by 18 years. It is said that in those 18 years, she did become a hermit. She wouldn't leave the home. She eventually developed dementia. And then in June of that year that she passed away, she 
she was very she had very she had lost it very much. She would yell at Henry across the ballroom like he was there. She became very violent one night that her two daughters, her two surviving daughters, had to restrain her. And it said that she passed away in her sleep. But like I said, she was the epitome of a military spouse. And those are some of the most important people we can thank today. 